Hey, what's up, my friends? We're going to evaluate the integral of x to the t minus 1 divided by ln x. And it's going to be awesome because we're going to do the sweet technique, the Feynman technique, and I'll show you how we do it step by step as we go through it. So first thing we're going to do is define this function as a function of t because after we evaluate the integral, x will be gone because of because of the limits, really, and we'll be left with a function of t. So what we want to solve for is g of t. Now, we don't know how to do the integral, right? But we do know how to take the derivative, and that's part of the trick. We take the derivative instead of the integral, and we take the derivative of a different variable than what we're integrating. So we're integrating with respect to x, so we're going to take a derivative of the other variable. If there isn't another variable, you need to introduce it in some way, and I've done that in other videos. But here we have one, t is any real number, and there's this pretty sweet trick that allows us to bring the derivative right inside the integral, and you can do that using the Leibniz integral rule. I've derived it. The conditions are quite mild. You can generally just bring it in. There are pathological functions that say you can't bring it in, so you have to ensure there's a dominating function and things like that. Okay, so we'll take the derivative, and when it comes in, we have 1 over ln x because we don't need to take the derivative of that because we're just taking the derivative with respect to t. This becomes the partial derivative once it's inside the integral. And this, my friends, is not the power rule because we're taking the derivative with respect to the exponent, not the base. So the derivative of this is ln x, x to the t, let me know if you want me to drive this. It's, it's not too bad. It's pretty easy. And this, my friends, this is like one of the main reasons why we took the derivative. So check this out. Ln x cancels out with this ln x, and we're left with the integral of x to the t, like literally. And we can just reverse power rule this away, uh, which is cool. And then we can plug in our limits of integration to get the derivative in all its glory, g prime t of 1 over t plus 1. So we took the derivative in order to make the integral easier. Now, we haven't really solved our problem, right? We're, we don't want g prime of t, we want g of t. So we need to take the integral of g prime of t to find out what g of t. And again, this is part of the trick. So we have an integral that we don't know how to do. So we took the derivative, which gave us an easier integral that we can do. And now we have to do another integral that's easier. We can evaluate this one. This is an easier integral in order to get the one we want. So we traded like one harder, hard integral with two easy integrals. <laughs> Having troubles counting. Okay, now we just can't integrate this straight up though because we'll be left with an integration constant. So we need to plug in limits of integration in order to deal with that constant that would result. So if we plug in, say, from A, we'll call it A, whatever it's going to be, to T, the integral of this is G of T, which is what we want, minus G of A, which we don't know. Now, this left-hand side, we can evaluate the integral. That's our friend, ln of T plus 1. And now we think about what is A. Well, A can be any number. So let's pick A to be 0, because if A is 0, then we plug in 0 for t, we got ln of 1, that's 0. So if a is 0, g a is 0. So that's cool. So if we go from 0 to t, then we're left with the integral of g t equals ln of t plus 1. So my friends, this is our integral. This is g t equals ln t plus 1 in all its glory. And we're done. Bob's your uncle. You should definitely check out my other videos that I have on integrals. The more you do, the better you'll get. Hang in there. You can survive. Cheers.